All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll just people as they enter. Um, so good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen with you so that you can see our um, presentation slides. Um, hold on one second. I got to move you all. And anytime you have any questions, you can feel free to uh, throw them in the chat box, or you can just interrupt us and ask, um, you know, we very much want to uh, keep this as a conversation. And um, so please don't hesitate to ask us any questions. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am Gina Hoover. I teach pre-K at Emma K. Dowd Elementary, and I am one of the district literacy lead teachers for pre-K. And I'm the center director, and I teach pre-K at Lincolnshire, and I'm the other DLLT. Um, and so um, our presentation today is called Engaging Pre-K Students in Foundational Reading Skills. And um, we're going to be talking a lot about the um, uh, book, Letter Lessons and First Words. And if you do not have that book, Lucinda's holding it up, but it'll also be linked here in the presentation later. If you do not have that book, there is a Google Doc linked right here on this first page. Please throw your name in that Google Doc and we will get one of those books sent out to you. Um, if you do not have that book, if you have it and you don't have it on you right now, don't worry. Everything you need is linked into this presentation. So, you know, don't panic if you're at home and it's at school or um, vice versa if you're at school and it's at home. So um, it is linked, but we just wanted you to know that if you do not have a copy of it, please put your name in the Google Doc and we will get a copy of the book sent out to you. Um, so again, welcome and thank you for joining us. And so um, what is not our focus in teaching reading skills in pre-K. Okay, so get ready for the answer to this question, everybody. Our focus in pre-K is not students getting to a certain level of text. Let me say that one more time. Our focus in pre-K is not students getting to a certain level of text in reading. Um, if you, you know, if you thought that that was the focus, let's think about it and change our mindset right now. Um, that being said, if that is not our focus, then what is our focus in teaching reading skills in pre-K? Our focus in pre-K is to know letter names, knowing letter sounds, having strong phonemic awareness and building content knowledge. So I want you to kind of take a second and just think about those four things. And these four topics are kind of what is going to guide our learning today um, throughout this 50, 60 minutes that we have together. Um, you know, uh, we, Lucinda and I are currently enrolled in a class with Nell Duke. And, um, you know, through that class, we've really been learning a lot about teaching uh, reading to young learners and, we kind of um, wanted to bring some of that learning to all of you because a lot of the learning that we are finding um, is just so valuable that we wanted to kind of share some of the things. So we are going to condense what we've learned, Lucinda, how long have we been doing it? About five weeks now? Uh, I think we were on week seven this week. Seven. Okay, uh, we're gonna condense seven weeks uh, into like 50 minutes. And obviously it's not all we've learned, but we kind of took out the most what we feel at this point is some of the most important things. So um, I want you to uh, start, we're gonna start off talking about morning message. So consider your morning message. How can we use it to do these things? Learn and apply letter names, learn and apply letter sounds, reinforce phonemic awareness and build content knowledge. So we're gonna think for about morning message for a second. There are some instead of, and then some things to try using message to do. So instead of saying today is, or doing random connections, or making it something that we just do every day because we feel like we have to do it, which by the way, I don't do it every day. Um, and I don't know that Lucinda does it every day either. It's not something you have to do every day. It's an every once in a while kind of thing, but it can be very purposeful and have like really good, um, guidance into what you can teach the kids through it. So um, we want you to try to think about if you're not already, which most of you probably are using message to purposefully launch today's learning. 
target specific student learning needs based on data, practice speaking and listening, build concepts about print, hear and apply letter sounds, build letter recognition and letter formation, and model writing for a purpose in an audience. So um, a few weeks ago in class, Nell really was stressing about when we are doing writing, even at a young age, let them know that there is a purpose for it and we have an audience for it. And while in pre-K, you know, it may not be them necessarily doing writing for an audience on their own at this point in the year, at least, um, we can as teachers model that so that they can understand that, you know, there is a purpose. So even message has a purpose to it. Um, you know, she tried to stress how, you know, getting away from saying today is Wednesday, uh, we will eat pizza for lunch, have a good day, um, and trying to use it to, uh, you know, really make connections and launch it. And, um, you know, we were kind of saying, uh, Lucinda and I, how we kind of think about when we call a student up, what does that student need to really focus on? You know, do they know all their letters? If they do, then maybe there's somebody that we're going to have to ask them to find a word in the message. Um, if they only, you know, I have one little guy, he, he only knows the letter S every faithfully, every time he knows that letter S. So I will try to, you know, have him maybe find a letter S and then show me a different letter if he can, you know, or things like that. So just really kind of thinking about how are you using this message and making it purposeful um, to guide your learners. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? I can't see all of you. So Lucinda, do you see anybody like? I, I can only see a few as well. Okay, with a hand raised or anything like that, please feel free to just interrupt. I, it's the way my screen is, I can't see everybody. Um, so, you know, again, what is the purpose and does it connect to your content? And in this um, presentation, we have linked our pre-K at a glance that uh, you can look at. And so these are some pictures that I took uh, the other day of my kids doing message. And um, side note, I did sanitize the marker in between every student. So uh, no worries there in um, teaching 2020. Um, but we use this message. We were talking about uh, you know conflict and compromise and ways that we could avoid conflict in the classroom. So we were talking about being a good friend. So, you know, I was very purposeful in the kids that I chose to come up and do different things. So if I knew that they could help me figure out a beginning sound, um, you know, we, they helped me fill in the beginning sound. If I, you know, knew that they knew a period, they came up and they helped me find a period and they, you know, reminded everybody that a period makes my sentence stop. Um, they love to come up and share the pen. And this was something that, um, you know, this year I was kind of like, oh my goodness, they love this, but how do I do it? So like I said, um, you know, I, I have a sanitizing wipe and I switch out markers and then wipe off one and give the next one a new one so that that way they still get the opportunity to come up and, um, you know, share the pen. Um, but again, it was kind of launching the learning for the day. We were going to talk about being a good friend, um, you know, and so I kind of used this as a starting point to our conversation for that day. Um, so I want you guys to kind of take a second and just think about your message. And I want to have a quick chat about, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see you all for a second. Um, hold on, I lost everybody. Uh oh, There you are. Um, so I want to just have a quick discussion for just a minute about message and any ideas that any of you have as far as you know, is there something that you do that you want to share with the good of the group that you think that other people can learn from? Anybody? Because uh, it's kind of tough to like share the pen right now. I have my kids use whiteboards. And so they're writing the beginning sounds on their whiteboards. And then I have them sitting across from each other on like the long tables. And then rather than teacher, teacher, look at mine, look at mine. They share each other's. And I loved, I, you, you had talked about that mm -hmm. and I love that idea um, of them, you know, being able to do that and um, still, you know, show you what they're learning. And I also, it kind of is a way to uh, keep everybody on task and engaged in, you know, in the message. Cause sometimes if it's not their turn, they lose focus as we know, especially I'm finding now that, um, 
you know, they're not right in front of me on the carpet because I don't bring mine to the carpet. They stay in their seats. And, you know, that is something that's probably my second biggest struggle with teaching right now is just that I kind of miss that time where they were right in front of me. So whether it's message or shared reading or, you know, even math, during math, when we're doing, you know, a whole group activity and stuff like that, um, you know, with them not being able to be at the rug, you know, the engagement piece sometimes is missing because they're just a little further from you and, you know, and they're in that chair and stuff. So um, yeah, Nikki, I love that, that idea. And uh, Maggie asked about putting the presentation in the chat room. It is in there. And I do believe I changed the share settings um, now so that everybody should be able to view that. We had switched it just because it was still a work in progress, but now it's finalized. So anybody else have anything about morning message that they want to ask a question or share an idea that they do with it? That's that's what I like to do at the end of my message. I always um, add a question so that it gives the, them an opportunity to turn and talk with each other. A little more difficult now because they have to kind of yell across their minor in desks actually. Um, and so it's a little more difficult it's a little louder, I guess you could say, um, but it gives them an opportunity to talk about what's gonna happen through the day and what we're gonna be talking about. So it gives them some opportunity to chat with each other. And it is, and um, you know, and like I said, now kind of just really stressed, you know, just really making everything purposeful and not making things so mundane that you, um, you know, just feel like this is something I'm doing just because I'm being told I have to do it. Um, and, you know, with kind of the focus being taken off of us worrying about getting kids to a certain level um, of text at the end of the year, rather than saying, you know, oh, pre-K has to be on a level, you know, D by the end of the year or whatever it was, um, you know, and really focusing on building these pre-reading skills. Um, you know, we kind of were talking the other day, we kind of feel like in some ways that's really going to, uh, you know, boost where they get to in kindergarten and beyond. You know, if we kind of set them up in pre-K and send them with these skills of, of, of you know, knowing letters knowledge and, and, and content knowledge and things like that, I, you know, we kind of felt like it would help them become better readers uh, in the long term. So, hey, Tina. Uh, yes. Have administrators been, has that been shared with administrators? that whole pre-K not on a certain level? Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I will say that this presentation was approved by <laughs> people. Um, so I took a screenshot of that. So I just, I wanna yell that from the mountaintops. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question, honestly. Um, I can find out that answer to that question. Um, you know, Lucid and I were, were um, careful to make sure that, you know, we chatted with um, others prior to this. So um, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. There are a lot of things that we're learning in this, um, in Nell Duke's uh, presentations that um, are different from what we typically do. So um, we're hoping that um, we're going to take it all to heart and figure out what the best avenue is for pre-K. Um, but it's a little different than what we are doing now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that being said, you know, nothing's going to be an overnight change. Um, right. So just it's just going to be a shift in our thinking. Mm -hmm. Everyone's thinking. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me go back to oh, oh, oh. lost the presentation. Um, sharing my screen. Gina, can I interrupt you just for a sec? Absolutely, please do, because I got to find the presentation again. <laughs> well, I am just curious on how those who have virtual and in-house kids, how they are doing morning message with both, how they are getting the, the virtual kids engaged like in that as well. I have a struggle keeping them engaged anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there uh, the idea of them using the whiteboard to copy down the message at home? I hadn't thought of that. So I like that idea for my at-home learners. That That's what I did when I um, was doing virtual, doing both. I would um, have them on their whiteboards and whatever, I, whatever the person was supposed to find in the message, 
I would have them, even if it was a period, I would have them make a period on their board or whatever it was that they were finding. Um, I would have them find it in the message and write it on their board. Yeah, that's kind of what I did too. And um, I know our, uh, my kindergarten teammate at Dow, she, um, they must have sent home like a packet. They had their um, messages pre, sorry, I'm changing a sharing setting. Courtney, I saw your message in the chat. I'm changing that now. Um, they pre-typed their messages for their kids. So then they must have sent that home uh, in a packet with them. And then that way they can um, have it right in front of them at home. And um, they were able to then follow along and circle and stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously that takes a lot of upfront thinking. And I'm, you know, admittedly not always one of those people that, um, you know, thinks that far up front, but uh, that I do could that weekly so that, um, I mean, I have only five virtual kiddos, but I just do a weekly packet and I put it out at the beginning of the week and they can come and grab it um, because that's all I, I can think ahead a week, but yeah. <laughs> that's all I've got. I can get a week ready um, and that's been working. They kind of understand that it's, you know, a different time and I'm doing my best to accommodate both learners. So that has worked well for me. That's all we can do right now is our best. So you, you have a weekly pickup that they come to the school and pick it up? I do, yep. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and I changed the sharing settings. I apologize on that Google Doc so that you can edit it now if you don't have the letter lessons book. So, all right. So let me go back to sharing my screen and get to the proper thing. <clears throat> all right. So... Um, we wanted to uh, take some time to, you know, we know that we get a lot of resources and we're, we don't always have the time to dive into said resources. So we wanted to make sure today that we um, showed you a resource and then um, eventually a little bit later, we're going to give you some time to look at it. So um, I'm going to go down and turn it over to Lucinda. All right. So this um, book, Letter Lessons and First Words, uh, we were given it back last year last year at some point and um, never really dove into it until we started this um, program with Nell Duke. And so I started diving into it on page 88 and 89. We're gonna get to those in a little bit, um, but it talks about um, specific, your students specifically and how you can individualize their instruction to get them all to be, um, have, know all their letters and letter sounds and of course that's where we're headed as far as what we want pre-k to be able to do is to know all their and be very proficient in it so um on page 88 and 89 it talks about um the cycles that your students are in so what we wanted you to do um it's linked here the letter lessons and words is and first words is linked we wanted you to look at page 88 and 89 with a student in mind and think about where they would fall in these cycles and to think about where you um, would start with them. I've actually um, started looking at it with my friends. Um, I have a group of five that still are struggling with just the letters in their name and writing their name. So they're gonna be in cycle one. Then I have another group that, um, it says that they should know um, in the cycle two, six to 10 letters. And then you're starting to build um, on to those letters that they know. Then in cycle three, you solidify that. Did you find it? Yeah. And real quick, sorry to interrupt, but when you're looking at this, don't look at the page number. If you're pulling it up online, don't look at the page number on the bottom. Look at the actual page number in the actual book. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, listen to there it is. Um, so cycle two um, is if they know six to 10 letters, which by the time they're finished cycle one, they should know because of learning their, the letters in their name and the other friends in, their, in the group. That's like a three week program. And if, you, if they don't get it, then of course you repeat it again. And then you go into cycle two and cycle three just solidifies what you've already taught in cycle um, two. And then cycle four goes into starting to introduce high frequency words, uh, which is another thing that we were actually talked about with Nell Duke that we should not teach high frequency words to our students. 
until they know all their letters and letter sounds uh, because we should teach them through letter sounds. Um, so when you get to cycle four, that's when we introduce them, but we introduce them in groups like so, go, no, uh, because they all have the same sound. And then you throw in one odd one like the. Um, so, but this is, a. I'm, I'm really excited to start this with my kids. I've made each one of them their own little um, alphabet strip to put on their desk because part of the program is you start up, start off with a warm up, and it's actually they touch each alphabet letter, and it's to teach them also to get the concept of pointing, you know, not word to word, but moving your pointer as you're saying your letter. Um, and then there's a, another great piece to it is called letter rings um, and your kids have a letter ring with all the letters that they know on them but then you keep the ones that they don't know and as they learn them you add them but then that also individualizes your instruction on what letters that they need to know um, so it's um, the, the alphabet strip that I made is just I cut this apart and made it into a strip because that way they have to go across instead of across and down. And then they, they get confused because if they don't have the concept of left to right, they get confused. But if we're just going um, all the way across, they don't have to worry about that concept. Um, another thing that then when we get to um, level four, you're gonna be introducing words, but the whole time you're in level two, cycle two and three, you're going through a program where they you do your alphabet and then they they hear it um, you you hear it then you go to your target letter and then you spell it then you and then you read it so you're actually starting with it can be kind of like your warm up to guided reading because you then you have a book that you're working with them you start out with books that are like caption books like that they just say the dog, the cat, and then you move into pattern books. So it's still kind of what we're working on, but we're not looking at a level that they're reading. We're building that proficiency of letters and letter sounds. And then after you get through cycle four, then you move into the first words. And that's when we start doing CBC words. And that's the goal for kindergarten. So if we have them to, through cycle four, um, by the time they're finished kindergarten, I mean, pre-K, they're still going to be readers because you're using text in this and they're also, you know, they're also gonna be able to, you know, use their letter sounds to break down words because you go into word families um, in cycle four. Mm -hmm. So we'll give you an opportunity to um, read through pages 88 and 89. Think about that student and where you would put them and um, it does do uppercase and lowercase individually. Um, you, you do them individually. It's not that you teach, that you use the card, you know, that you, like I have their individual cards. They have to know both of them, you know, to get it in onto their ring. Um, but we'll let you dive into that. Um, look at where you're gonna, what student, and then are we gonna go straight into create do you want to go? Yeah, I think so. yeah, um, yeah, I'm looking at the time. Yeah. So, you know, once you dive into the resource and think about that student linked right here is Ology Willigers. Linked. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here is a chart. We want you to, um, we're trying to build a bank of activities. We're working, you know, trying to work smarter, not harder. Um, so we're trying to build a bank of these activities that you might find in this book. Um, so you can put the page number that the activity is on. If you want to create a, you know, if you think of a quick activity that's ready to use, uh, you can link it there. What skills does it um, address? And then any other ideas that you might have thought of while you were looking at it. Um, but like Lucinda said, we really wanted to give you the time to be able to dive into this resource. If you don't have the hard copy in front of you, it is linked here as well, um, where it says dive into the resource. And the, um, what was it, page one? I don't remember off the top of my head, Lucinda, what's the pages that the activities are on? Um, they start on page 106 to 115. 
Um, but the one good one thing that if we could get some a bank of um, the target letter activities when you're working on it, because they don't give you really many activities for that in this book. Um, but so if we could kind of when we're teaching those target letters, what are some activities we could use um, to teach those target letters? And this will be like kind of a working document. It's not like we're saying in the next 15 minutes, you know, you got to but if you, as, as you're teaching it, or if you think of something, you know, just add it into this document. Um, Cause like Lucinda said, that is an area where this doesn't give you too many um, ideas. And again, just a quick reminder, when you're looking at the page numbers, if you're looking at this electronic version, make sure you look at the page number on the actual document and not at the page number that's down here. Does anybody have any questions about what you are going to do? What pages did you say, Gina? Or the chart is 88 and 89. And then um, one, I forget, would you just say, listen, 110 to 120? 106 to 115, I think it is where the okay. resources are. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to just give you about, it's 927. Um, we will give you until about 945 um, to take a look at the resource. Uh, we're, we're here, don't go away. Uh, like I tell the kids, stay on Zoom. Uh, but you know, we're here if you have questions um, or want to come back, but just take about 15 minutes to dive into the resource a little bit. And if you see any you know, big ideas, put it in that chart and we'll come back together at 9.45. All right, we're gonna stop recording for a few minutes, I think. Or no, did we? I don't know. I'm just gonna pause it. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so I, I was kind of like watching as you guys were adding activities and, um, you know, I think that that's going to be a great resource for all of us um, to be able to continue to add. Um, Donna had asked if there were, um, you know, the resources needed to, to do some of these activities in this book. Um, as far as I'm aware, there are not, you know, like the domino cards and things like that. Those are things that we would have to create. Um, that being said, you know, uh, we can certainly start to work on those kinds of things um, and share them out, uh, you know, for the good of the group. So if, you know, if you create a letter wheel for, you know, the matching activity and you're willing to share it, um, you know, let's add that in here. But um, also, you know, that's something that Lucinda and I uh, can definitely start to work on as um, well. I'm actually looking for the book Words Your Way, if anybody happens to have that book, because that is a great resource for pictures. Um, there are multiple pictures for each letter in that book. So it would be great to have those for when you're doing the picture, any of the picture sorts or anything like that, because there are multiple representations. That other one too, Lucinda, um, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. It's a red binder. Um, it's a scholastic resource. Your lead teacher should have it. I can't think oh, of it. All. Right. You know which one I'm talking about? Uh -huh. It has a lot of different pictures in there. Um, if you need, you know, pictures for uh, letters and stuff like that. It's like a giant red binder. Um, a and resource that came with those new libraries um, that we yes. all got, the new scholastic libraries. Um, it's actually when our phonics website becomes public, it's actually linked on there. Um, and that'll hopefully be public soon. But um, so yeah, so there are resources out there to be able to, you know, get some of these things. However, um, you know, the motto of today's PD is better together. And especially I feel like in this, this 2020 teaching um, era of, of the way that things are right now, we are better together for sure. So, you know, I think relying on each other and, and you know, helping out when there's an act, you know, if you make an activity and you're willing to share it, um, you know, we can have some great resources to uh, really help, you know, help our students um, out as, you know, they, as we build these activity banks and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, definitely if you're willing to share things that you make or as Lucinda and I build our um, bank of activities, we will definitely um, share those as well with you guys. And like we said, that that document that you all just um, used to put your activities on will just be a working document and it will stay uh, that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go back to 
sharing my screen again with all of you. I, I also um, am working on making the hopscotch, but instead of doing it on a shower curtain, I'm doing it on construction paper and putting it together because I feel like I can tape that to the floor easier, that they won't be slipping on it when they're trying to um, move around from letter to letter. Um, so anyway, we hope, like I said, we kind of hope that you guys found this resource valuable and the time that we gave you to also look into it because, you know, like we said, we're given often, we're often given resources and just, you know, we get busy and it kind of gets put on a shelf. And so, you know, when we were planning this PD, we really wanted you to have the time to uh, be able to dive into the resource. It is a really exciting resource. Once you dive into it, it's really exciting to see how you can move all of your students forward individually, but it not, it's not going to be a lot of work for you. Um, so um, how are we going to accelerate our literacy development in six words? So we have a Jamboard. Um, Nell Duke did this with us last week um, about how we could talk about our literacy in six words. So we added a Jamboard. If you could add a post-a note to our jam board on your six words about early literacy and accelerating it for, for our students. There we go. So we, we actually created our post-its and if you could create one to get us all thinking in the right mindset, it would be great. It doesn't have to be anything like, you know, crazy wordy. Mine was literally let kids love books and read lots. So yeah. it's nothing earth shattering. It's nothing, you know, philosophical or anything like that. It was, you know, I, I truly believe that, you know, if we really just start to build that love of reading early and, and, um, you know, build these developmental skills, I think that, you know, they will grow as readers and, and accelerate. Absolutely. That's what I like about this program. It does you still have your re your text in there. And that's what we use in the beginning. We use the um, caption text and we move into the pattern text. And so it, it just, it incorporates all of it. Pretty exciting. All right. So you have an evaluation. We're giving you the last 10 minutes to fill out the evaluation and um, can you share your screen again? Yes. And real quick, before we go to the evaluation part, does anybody have any questions or anything um, that you found when you were diving into that resource that you really want to, um, you know, share really quickly with everyone or a question that you have for Lucinda and I? For the good of the group? For the good of the group. Um, you can always um, ask us later. Um, there is a Twitter handle that they want us to uh, tweet with today. Um, if you are a Twitter, Twitter, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a word I made that up, but um, it's hashtag WCPS better together. And um, you can use that to, uh, to tweet out, you know, anything that you learned today or um, anything like that. And like I said before, remember, especially now we are better together and, and, um, you know, I, that is one of the best things about being a pre-K teacher is we have an amazing pre-K team in this county. And, uh, I truly feel like we can all learn from each other and we can all help each other out. So, um, you know, that being said, you can contact Lucinda and I, uh, anytime with questions. And Cheryl, Thank you, ladies for, uh, signing up to do this and for giving us something beneficial this morning. You're welcome. We do hope, well, we, we appreciate that because we always hope that, you know, the things that we share are beneficial and, and you guys get something from it. And, uh, you know, feel free if you have questions, you can pop them in the chat. Um, we'll stay on here for a few more minutes if you have questions. And like Lucinda said, don't forget to fill out the evaluation because we truly do read those. And, uh, you know, we, we base our future PDs off of those for you. Is the evaluation linked? I think it's linked at the beginning of all the, um, your options. Yeah. So what came from Mr. Willow? Oh, that, yes. Is that the one you're talking about? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes. It's like a general. Uh, Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and let us know if you need anything.